Swan would please sit down and um, relax, and we'll get this thing going. It's 8.33 in the morning. Thank you all for being here. This morning, we're going to have Apostle Boone uh, lead us in prayer. So if you would please come forward and uh, take care of us. Jennifer, would you like to come forward? Come on. Jennifer James is going to lead us in prayer this morning. I meant pledge. <laughs> She's going, what? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Our first proclamation today is the African American Heritage Month. So all of you in the audience that are here to celebrate African American Heritage Month, please come forward. And Juneteenth. Come on up, everybody. If you will sort of file behind me just a bit and get everybody up here. <laughs> President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22, 1862 to abolish slavery and grant freedom to black slaves in the United States. The effective date of that law was January 1, 1863, preceding the 13th Amendment, and the ratification of this amendment, December 6, 1865. Union General Gordon Granger, who was requested to take over the state of Texas, used the military force of more than 1,800 federal troops to manage the crisis and enforce the Emancipation Proclamation, arrived on the shores of Galveston, Texas, on June 19, 1865. General Granger read order number three to the countless slaves who gathered, which in part read, the people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. Failure to protect these recently freed people resulted in additional amendments for their rights and protection with the 14th and the 15th amendments. The San Angelo, Texas Juneteenth Committee 
has consistently recognized June 19th as Emancipation Day for blacks in the state of Texas and considered a day worthy of remembrance and celebration in honor of their ancestors and the end of slavery. Therefore, I, Brenda Gunter, Mayor of the City of San Angelo, Texas, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of June as African American Heritage Month and June 19th as Juneteenth 2018 celebration in San Angelo, Texas, and call upon all peoples to join in learning <coughs> and celebrating these special acknowledgments of freedom and equity. Would anyone like to speak this morning? I want to thank the city of San Angelo and the city council, the mayor, and all of you who have turned out for this. We want you to know how much we appreciate your participation. With that, I'm going to bring my assistant, Aubrey Todd, up here <laughs> to say a couple of words. I thought the buck stopped with the top. <laughs> uh, we just want to thank you for all of the uh, contributions and participation that you've given us. There is no way in the world that we could do what we've done without your participation, the participation of the city, the people in the community, the various organizations. Uh, Juneteenth will be celebrated on June the 16th this year, uh, primarily because June the 19th is in the middle of the week, and we just felt like for those people who work that in all probability it would be a lot easier and more amenable to their bosses that we would have it on a weekend rather than in, in the middle of the week. We would invite you as a community to come down. This is a celebration for the community. I know most people think of June 19th as being a black holiday. It is. But in San Angelo, it's a community celebration. Thank you so much for all that you do. Good morning, and thank you, Mayor and City Council. And uh, on behalf of the Juneteenth Committee, I just want to reiterate that the activities will be on June 16th. Uh, there will be a parade that starts at 10. We'll begin lining up around 9th Street and Martin Luther King Drive, which is right near Carver School. And we will proceed to Martin Luther King Park, where there we'll have a brief program, and we will also have wonderful barbecue. So we invite the community to come out and support us. Thank you. to challenge him. Our next uh, proclamation is for Balloon Fest weekend and the San Angelo Lions. If those of you here in the audience, please come forward. Thank you. How are you today? Good. 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 Good.
Hey, Tommy. Come on. Come on around here. Come on. <coughs> Bill, how are you? Good. Come on. The San Angelo Lions will hold their second annual Balloon Fest on June 15th through the 17th. There are nine Lions Clubs in San Angelo who form the San Angelo Lions Charities. The mission of the Lions Charities is to help meet the vital needs of the Concho Valley with particular emphasis on site conservation, especially children. San Angelo Lions Charities is also responsible for the annual pancake breakfast and other fundraisers throughout the year, including the San Angelo Lions Balloon Fest. As the Lions motto says, we serve. This is exactly what the Balloon Fest does. The Lions serve the Concho Valley where SAISD has allowed use of the practice football field at Glen Junior High to have hot air balloons from around Texas meet for the pleasure of San Angelo. During the Balloon Fest, there will be vendors, a 5K run, pancake breakfast, and a kid's zone, which has been a big hit. 100% of the net proceeds from the 2018 Lions Balloon Fest will be given back to the community through the charitable surface activities of each of the nine Lions Clubs, plus Lions Charities current and future service endeavors, which includes children's eye screenings, eyeglass recycling, eye exams, and glasses for children. Therefore, I, Brenda Gunter, Mayor of the City of San Angelo, Texas, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim June 15th through 17th, 2018, as Balloon Fest Weekend in San Angelo, Texas, and call upon the citizens of San Angelo to observe this weekend with appropriate events and activities. Keith, would you like to come forward and speak? Uh, Mayor, Council, on behalf of the nine clubs here in San Angelo and the some 400 members, we'd like to say thank you for this recognition and invite everybody to come out the 15th, 16th, and 17th for a great weekend of entertainment and enjoyment. Thank you. May I have Mike, Scott, and Lou come forward, please? Mike Scott, Federal Security Director, will present the City of San Angelo and San Angelo Regional Airport, Mathis Field, with the Partnership Award for our continued support of the Transportation Security Administration's TSA's mission. Good morning, uh, Mayor, City Council, and Lou. Uh, it's my pleasure today to present our TSA Partnership Award 
the city of San Angelo and to the airport uh, for all, over 15 years of an amazing partnership. Uh, when I think of aviation security and partnership, I think of a four-legged stool. <coughs> Excuse me. I think of the airport officials and all the workers at the airport. I think of the airlines. I think of TSA. And I think of the traveling public. And if any one of those stool, uh, legs of the stool breaks, the stool is not very steady. And I can just tell you and assure you that the partnership between the airport and the city and TSA has been so strong that, that it's led to great successes here at uh, San Angelo Regional Airport. And I think Lou is the strength behind that partnership. If you ever go to the airport and Lou's not in his office, go to the checkpoint because he's either moving bins, <laughs> helping move baggage, or doing something to help TSA. And, and we, we recognize it and we really appreciate it. And Mayor, if you would please accept this award. Thank you very much. <coughs> thank you, Mayor, and thank you, uh, Directors uh, Scott. One thing that I do want to say is. Uh, we're very fortunate in San Angelo. Uh, speaking to my colleagues throughout the country, uh, a lot of airports do not have the partnership that we do with the TSA. And I also want to recognize the staff, uh, Security Director Bruce Burkett, Officer Burkett, and Alternate Security Coordinator Mitch Sprunger in the back. Without their support and uh, their dedication, as well as Kirk Moore's staff, this would not happen. Thank you. Mm. I will remind everybody to turn off your cell phones, if you would, please. We will now open, open the meeting for public comment. Issues or items that are not on the agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak from the podium, begin by stating their name, and limit remarks to less than three minutes. Council members may request that a discussed item be placed on a future agenda. The council takes public comment on all regular agenda items during the discussion of those items. Do I have anyone in the audience who would like to come forward and speak? Please state your name. My name, my name is Jamie Lee Tabor. Okay. Go ahead, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm seeking uh, more like advice from all of you. <laughs> uh, I'm tired of... Uh, when I go through something where I live, everybody suggests go to West Texas Legal Services. Well, they won't do everything for some people because of the uh, limit uh, budget I live on. Uh, this is about a, an apartment complex where I live, and uh, the manager uh, is disrespectful. Uh, I, almost a little racial uh, sometimes for the wh white, you know, I'm white, and um, I wish she would just, like, chill out a little bit, you know. She does not like people who are 50 and over, and the owner has even made a comment to me in my face about her and her conduct. Uh, she does not like anybody over 50, and... Uh, and uh, and he knows that, and he said she doesn't care about any of the attendants in this apartment complex. She just cares about her money. But I, I was needing things repaired, and uh, she told me to call, and I called her for two weeks, and she never, never uh, returns a message, never will talk to you, and then she'll come and confront you, and then she either wants to evict you out and, you know, I can't keep moving every month or every four months, and, you know, that's costly. And I should not have to move because she's in a, you know, in an uproar or a bad attitude uh, towards 
different races of people. Thank you very much. Daniel, who should she contact in the city? At this point, really, it is a, a civil matter. Um, you know, as far as talking to someone, uh, you've talked to your attorney. Um, that's, all, that's all I can say at this point. Is you should reach out to the right people. But uh, it is a civil matter, though, ma'am. So it's not much really the, uh, the city can do. Teresa, is that correct? Okay. Thank you for your comments today. Is there any additional um, public comment? Yes, you may, Daniel. Mayor, I'd like to uh, call Guy Andrews to the, the to the front. I'd like to introduce him. Uh, Guy is our new economic development director. He comes to us from Brownwood. He was executive director of the municipal development district there. He also has roots here in West Texas. He was the uh, economic, de uh, the director of economic development through the Odessa Chamber of Commerce. A wonderful experience. Uh, knows the planning process. He also led the, the community development uh, in Conroe. Uh, we're very blessed to have him here, and I just wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity to introduce him to the citizens and also to the city council. Thank you very much, Daniel Guy. Would you like to make a few comments? I'd just like to thank uh, council mayor and council for the opportunity to come and serve San Angelo in the capacity and just look forward to uh, growing San Angelo and uh, continue to be the place that people want to live and do business. Thank you, Guy. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Any further public comment? If not, we will close public comment at this point and we will go into the consent agenda. I'm going to start with Tommy Hebert. Do you have anything you'd like to pull from the consent agenda? No, ma'am, I do not. Tom? Nothing to pull. Harry? Nothing. Lucy? Nothing to pull. Lane? Billy? Nothing to pull. With no um, items being pulled, may I have a motion to so approve? And that is a motion and a second. And all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 7 0. We will now go into our regular agenda. Item A, public hearing, discussion, and deliberation on requested projects to be considered for funding with grant year 2018 Community Development Block Grant, CD, BG, and Home Investment Partnerships, grant funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and I have Bob Salas here to speak to us. Thank you, Bob. Good morning, Mayor, Council. Uh, we are here to get direction from you on our allocation for our 2018 grant funds. Uh, as required, we uh, held two public meetings uh, to get input from citizens, which helped us craft our proposals that you're gonna see today. Um, we also ensured that uh, all the projects we're submitting are, um, are, are, uh, are consistent with our five-year strategic plan. Um, well, we've seen a steady uh, decline over the last 10 years, um, this year we actually got a bump. We, um, got what have ten you seen the decline in? Sorry? What was the decline in? Uh, the decline was in both CDBG and home grants over the last 10 years, except for this year. We actually got a bump. We had 10,000 in CDBG funds and 89,000 in home grants. Uh, we went from discussions to eliminating the program to a raise. So <laughs> politics, you never know. It's incredible how that works. But we're very happy. Uh, this is just a, a graph depicting the trends. Again, once you can see that it's been declining except for the last year, um, where hopefully it'll, start, it'll keep going up. Um, as part of the process, uh, we always look at uh, some of the uh, housing trends in San Angelo. Uh, not surprisingly, we still have a cost burden, and that is uh, someone paying more than 30% of their income going towards housing. We consider that a, um, a tax of bird, I mean, a uh, cost burden. And you can see that owners at 21% and renters, almost half of the renters are witnessing a cost burden. Uh, in fact, 12% of those renters are paying more than 50% of their income towards housing. How does that relate to the total city? Or is that the total city that, that owners is, versus? That's the city. Those that city is numbers. the total city. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also still have 14% of our population in poverty. Uh, we also have 17% uh, uh, Social Security age or older, and we have an aging housing stock. Uh, we believe that our programs we're submitting to you uh, address some of these problems, some of these uh, negative trends. Uh, here's our recommendation for our CDBG. 
Uh, the total amount we have available is 731,822, and we're asking for 146,364 for admin, uh, 125,000 for program delivery, 144,154 for debt payment services for a loan we took out for Producers Park, um, 38,000 for code compliance. That's, that's for one officer to stay in our targeted neighborhoods. Uh, 30,000 for homeless prevention, 148,000 for neighborhood blitz, and 100,304 for emergency repairs. The uh, biggest change this year is the renewal of our um, uh, neighborhood blitz. Um, mm -hmm. We canceled it this year because we, we wanted to fund this homeless prevention program, but it didn't perform as well as we thought, as we thought, as we thought it would be. Uh, so we're basically asking to renew the, um, the blitz, which uh, we got a lot of pushback from a lot of people for not having it. So we're, we're bringing it forward again. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. uh, this year we're going to host it at the um, Bel Air neighborhood, which is one of our newest neighborhoods we target for revitalization. So any May questions I, on CDBG I, before I move on? Yes. Billy, you want to ask a question at this point? Yes, I Please. would. Uh, Bob, question. Uh, you said on the code compliance, that's the salary for one officer for the targeted areas. Yes, ma'am. Would you list those targeted areas for me, please? Sure. Um, we have six. Uh, we have, um, let's see if I can remember them. It's, uh, I didn't um, mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, sh I should know these. Uh, it's Blackshear, um, Reagan. The new one is Lakeview. Then we have Fort Concho. Uh, we have Rio Vista, and then we have Bel Air. Yeah. Those oh, are the okay. six. Okay. So, so they that have to stay officer, in one of those areas. So that code compliance officer um, focuses on those areas that need attention? Yes, ma'am. Actually, okay. all our officers go into these areas, but this one person has to stay in those areas. Okay. He rotates around, and uh, he, we focus his, uh, his, 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 uh, his time and duty is in those areas. He can't, ex he can't go out to the southwest area, for example. Um, so that's to that's, that's, that's ensure that... We always have someone looking at our neighborhoods that, that to kind of just kind of beautification purposes. But we do have an officer that checks the southwest area. We do. We do. Okay. We have uh, six officers, and they, they span the, the, the city, and a lot of them do handle some of these areas as well. Okay. It's just that this person is targeted for that particular area, Thank and they can't exceed that. So. What's in your admin cost? Uh, some of my pay. <laughs> <laughs> some of our staff's pay. Um, uh, travel, uh, just admin stuff. What so percent of, is that of the total? Uh, we, uh, we can't exceed 20%. That's always our target. And you can see that's not enough, uh, but uh, we have four people, four personnel in the uh, division. Uh, so we use other funds as well to help fund our, our uh Why our is salaries. a code compliance salary not included in admin? Uh, because uh, it would not, it would be ineligible, uh, so we the way we do it is we we use it as part of an activity. As a, an activity. It is an activity, yes, ma'am. It is an eligible activity. Uh, a lot of cities do that. Uh, in fact, a lot of cities use uh, more than that. So. I think Tom, you have a question or comment. And maybe I missed it. You covered it, Bob. At the homeless prevention, we're going from sixty thousand to thirty thousand. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Can you go over that again? I mean, yeah. Uh, what happened was we started with sixty thousand, and uh, what happens is we're not—it's not performing as well as we thought it would be. Uh, we're not getting as many people. I think it's because it's very stringent. The uh, it's very strict on who's eligible, uh, and because of that, I think uh, we eliminate a lot of folks uh, who are eligible, and so therefore, um, so we reduced the amount so we could have so we could fund the neighborhood blitz. I'm very excited. I'm, I know last year when you presented this, I was questioning the thought process and eliminating the blitz because I felt like it had been incredibly successful and I hated to see it go from whatever level to zero because that to me has been one of the most successful projects, right. programs that we have had. It's so beneficial. So it I'm is. thrilled to see it back in here. And so is my, so is my staff. They're happy with it too. They, they love the blitz. So. so. And Bob, talk again. I um, I may have missed this. The emergency repairs. What 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 is the reason for uh, the decrease? The there? emergency repair program handles events that happened recently. We say two to a month or so. Um, things like gas leaks, electrical problems, uh, sewer line repairs. We cap it at five thousand dollars, and we respond within three days. Um, 
we normally it's it's our expenditure level is usually about a hundred thousand. We uh, we increased it because we had extra funds from the because uh, we eliminated the blitz. So we increased the emergency repair last year. Um, we added a a roof repair program as well uh, from, from from this past year. Um, so this emergency repair is pretty consistent what we've been paying on a regular basis for the last several years. Okay, great, thanks. Go ahead, Bob, go ahead. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Lucy, I think had a question, oh, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I was gonna say, Bob, go ahead and finish that. What's rehab program delivery? What does that involve? Program delivery, uh, that is actually to help fund uh, the cost of uh, our construction manager, for example, to go out and take action on a house. Uh, it kind of helps fund some of our salary and cost of doing business. So that salaries, there's salaries in there as well? Well, it's sort of, uh, it's kind of, as you can see, you can tell we-, we Well, it is or it isn't, is it? it? It is part of the salary, yes, but it's also more than that. It includes other things. So yes, if, you, it's, if it's, you look at the total of 731, because we have code compliance um, salary, we have admin salary, and now we have part of the rehab program salary. So what is the total Salary of this total, um, seven hundred thirty-one thousand. Oh, I'll tell you what, then. where's my, where's Mari? Can you help me out there, Mari? It's all right. Uh, we'll keep going. Yeah, but that's we'll get that number along. It the is. Way. I, I know. I, here, here's the thing. We need to. Uh, my staff is funded through these programs, mm -hmm. and otherwise, it comes from general funds. Right. So we try to ensure that we cover our salary cost. Okay. We went from a staff of ten when I first took over in two thousand five. 2006, we're down to three, and then myself. Okay. And I'm partially funded with other things, so we have to, unfortunately. Thanks, Bob. So, yeah. Good. All right, and our uh, home funds, here's our proposal. We're asking for uh, 36,149 in home admin. Uh, that is temporary, we're allowed 10% uh, for admin. 145,346 for first time home buyers. 70,000 for attendant-based rental assistance for special needs, and uh, 110,000 for Galley CDC for the what we call the CHOTO set aside. Now these funds have to go to a CHOTO, which is Community Housing Development Organization, where the money goes back to HUD. So we will, make, we will ensure that we do have a CHOTO, act, active CHOTO, they can spend this money. So. Um, describe the first time home buyers program. These are for folks who have never owned a home or haven't owned a home for the last three years. Um, and uh, we basically provide down payment and closing costs for them to move in. Thank you. And it's a very, very successful people. It uh, helps us get folks into new homes. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, Harry, well, Harry has yes, a question. Sir. Thank you. More of a comment, but I want Bob to, to make sure since citizens are watching this, that they understand <clears throat> This is federal money that has passed through to the city, but there are certain guidelines that we've got to meet because there are federal dollars here. So that's one of the reasons that we're talking about the 10% on on the admin for salaries and, and, and so forth. Is that correct, Bob? That is correct. Yes, sir. It is. So with the, so is the total set aside. Those are those are guidelines from the feds. Uh, we must use these funds for for them while it goes back. On the first time home buyers, you said it's for three years, so someone who hasn't owned a home for three years, is there any consideration in addition to that for people who filed bankruptcy prior to those three years? Uh, I'm not sure bankruptcy, I know for divorce, it does include divorce. Uh, I don't think bankruptcy is one of the three. It does not include it. She's my expert, so. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, but, you, but, but we do, uh, if you're a divorce process, we will be able to help you out. Okay. So, well, at this point, if you're comfortable with our recommendations, we'll draft an annual action plan that will come to you next month for your approval before it goes to the HUD. Do I have further questions from council or comments that you would like to make? I just want to say um, a comment to Bob. Um, he did a presentation, he and other community partners, on availability of, of you know, low-income um, housing at the Ministerial Alliance about a week and a half ago, I think it was. Anyway, Bob did an excellent job. The information was so good to folks in the community that they're still talking about it and looking, you know, helping others in the community look for ways that they can avail themselves of some of the services that they may not have even known were available. So I just wanted to say thank you, Bob, for <coughs> coordinating that and for ensuring that our, you know, 
people that live below the, um, you know, medium income line, almost into poverty, and some actually into poverty. I appreciate all the work, and I'm sure all of us up here appreciate all the work you do in focusing on that area. So I just thank, wanted thank to you very much. say appreciate thank you. That. Elaine, do you have a qu comment or question? Yeah, I think I'll ask this. <clears throat> the first time home buyers, what was the financial requirements for that? Is there an income? Well, the, basically, uh, what you have to do is you have to meet our criteria, which, again, it's 80% uh, of uh, medium income. For give you an example, family of four cannot make more than $49,000. And that changes every year. It increases every year. So let's give you an idea what we're talking about. Uh, they have to go to a bank that participates with us and get approved. Uh, the bank, those banks that participate with us know our process, know our program. Uh, they kind of vet them up, up front. By the time they come to us, uh, they're usually uh, eligible. And then we, uh, uh, we come to the table at closing with a check to help them get into that house. Those banks that are in with us on this, what are the, usually the interest rates on that? Are they higher? Are they normal based on credit? I'll, I'm going to let Mari uh, answer that question. On credit, uh, they usually run, I think average right now is about 4.5%. And most of our clients, since they're low income, they all basically come about the same rate. Okay. Lucy, do you have questions or yes. comments? I just had a question. Do you have a very long line, list of uh, people that Ooh. are participating? Mm -hmm. uh, we do. We have, uh, there's about how many banks? There's 10 banks participating. So, uh, yeah, they are. They're on our website. Uh, we also have uh, brochures that we can hand out. I'm, you you miss a, yeah, I was wondering, people, as far as families, do you have a list, of, a long list of families that are... Um, we, we don't have a wait, like a waiting list. Waiting list? Yeah, yeah, we don't have a waiting list. It's for okay. some first serve. And uh, um, I mean, uh, I don't think, I mean, we handle about, how many do we handle a year? About 15 or so a year. Uh, so you can see it's not, they're not coming through the door every, every week or every day. It's, uh, they're spread out throughout the year. Thank you. You know, those banks, are they local? Or are they uh, secondary market? Some, some are local. Some are... They're, all, they're, they're local. Yes, all they, all, local. They're they are all local. Okay. The banks are required to do a certain percentage of mm -hmm. their loans gotcha. for low income. So they have to meet those expectations, and they're reviewed based off of that. Yep. So, Harry, do you have a question or comment? <laughs> Tom, no, question or comment? I, I do have yes, one. Tom. Bob, how, you, uh, how do you advertise or... Uh, make known to anyone uh, the services and programs that, that you do offer with regard to CDBG and home funds? Well, um, we have to, uh, we kind of let the, uh, we have, of course, we advertise on our website, uh, uh, word of mouth. Uh, we don't actively pursue advertising because of limited funds. We usually have more need than we have funds. So we're pretty comfortable to get with the number of folks that are coming to us. Uh, uh, the word gets out pretty quick. They know who we are. And, um, yeah. You don't have tr you don't have trouble. I have. We have no trouble. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, using our money. Good. Good. So if you'll go back to the first screen, what uh, is the life of the debt on Pioneer Park? The uh, debt payment was a, it was services. A 20, it was a twenty-year loan, and uh, we are in year. <laughs> uh, year, I think it was. Uh, we're five, in about probably. year seven, I think. Okay. So we have another another good chunk of years to uh, keep paying that money. Okay. Is there any further question or comment before we have a motion? No. We don't need a motion this time. Okay. I think we we'll just take You're direction, just and us. next next month we'll ask for for approval. So any further question or comment for Bob? I think we just got an education too, Mayor, because you know until we saw some of these slides, and I saw them like a week and a half ago. I didn't even know about the first time homeowners, you know. Home buyers program. So and we also <laughs> have a uh, through the half cent sales tax. We have an affordable housing program, and we provide gap financing for brand new homes. These first time home buyers are usually existing homes, uh, but we, uh, so we see a lot of new homes coming up in our target areas. Some of those are part of our half cent sales tax, which is really exciting. Is some of the new so homes is. coming up in these targeted areas, and I um, mean, you look at the quality of the homes that people are building and the price. Tag. It's yeah. quite impressive, and it really changes the neighborhood. So I'm excited to see it. Really it really does. And the CDC it's made a does real a lot of difference work. in yeah. those neighborhoods. Mate. It has, honey. It has. 
You're correct. Yeah. Yes. Like I was saying, uh, actually, Galley CDC, they're one of our, they are a contract for half cent sales tax. They do a marvelous job of getting out there and building in our target neighborhood. They don't have to, but they do. They decided to focus, uh, to participate with that, with our program. So, Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Item B is the update responding to May 1, 2018 questions asked regarding the fire department funding and planning related to one, the new slash old fire station number four, two, MOU with Goodfell Air Force Base related to new ambulance with EMTs, equipment and supplies, three, the plan to fund the eight firefighters after the expiration of the SAFER grant, the possibility of fire training being provided through a contract with Goodfell Air Force Base, and five, any mandated reason why fire trucks support all ambulance runs. Chief, you're on. Morning, Mayor, Council, Fire Chief Morning, Brian Dunn. Chief. Uh, back on May 1st, a citizen asked a few good questions and I wasn't allowed to respond to those. So what I'm doing today is uh, responding to those questions so the citizens will know what the answers to those were. The first question was, when fire station number four is finished, Will the personnel, equipment, supplies, and maintenance be transferred from the old station four to the new station? And will the old station be sh then be shut down? Any personnel or viable equipment will be and supplies will be transferred to the new station four. A new fire, sta new fire engine has been ordered for the new station uh, because the current engine is 26 years old. Uh, the recommended standard for replacing the fire engine is 12 years. We have not been able to replace that one because you cannot order one that will fit in the old station at this time. Um, we've nursed this truck along, but anything viable will be transferred to the new station uh, when it's complete, which should be in the fall, and the new truck should be here in the fall. Question number two, a new ambulance with EMT supplies and equipment was approved to help support Goodfell as well as the city. Does the MOU with Goodfell Air Force Base include reimbursement for the complete cost to the city for the ambulance and personnel? The new medic, which was approved, was not a approved to support for Goodfell Air Force Base. It was approved because of the sheer amount of runs that we make, which uh, we're probably on pace to break 14,000 ambulance runs this year. The reason it will go to Station 4 is because that is the gap in coverage from where we have the other ambulances positioned at this time. Uh, ambulance service is a fee for use and you're paid as people use that uh, service. The grant of obtained no, question number three, the grant if it came for eight firefighters, a safer grant covers the cost of most firefighter personnel for the first two years and partially for the third. The cost is fully on the taxpayers for $600,000 per year, so will the city reduce manpower to cover the additional cost at the end or when it is in the third year? Um, SAFD asked for these personnel because we're trying to meet national standards on 1710, and we actually had four of those eight positions several years ago, and they got cut. Um, for us, it would be nearly meaningless to hire them and then get rid of them at three years when it takes me 18 months to train these people. Um, question number four, could, could fire training be completed through a contract with Goodfellow Air Force Base? Uh, Goodfellow does have a great training facility, but a lot of their primary focus is on aircraft rescue firefighting. We do that also at the airport here, but our primary focus is on structural firefighting and protecting the citizens in San Angelo. Um, Goodfellow Air Force Base is training facility is scheduled to near capacity because of what they bring in there and what they do. We do have training agreements with them and we do rotate some of our personnel in and out for a few of the specialty things, but we actually do more and different training than what they do in some areas and we, we provide them with training in areas that they do not cover. Uh, and do they the, maintain our fire trucks? They do. We have an MOU with them. I have like five MOUs with them for different things, hazmat, many different things. Uh, one of the issues trying to do all your training out at Goodfell Air Force Base is if they go into a lockdown or any issues like that, you're either locked on or off the base, and you have all kinds of issues with, with your uh, license and entities such as me would be TCFP. So if we were locked out for a day, that would affect us on, on what we're doing. Um, question number five, is there a federal or state regulation that requires a fire truck and an ambulance to both go to a run? The city could save a lot of money by not running both. There's not a federal or state law that requires responding with a fire truck and an ambulance. <laughs> San Angelo Fire Department responds to certain types of calls with a fire truck and ambulance because it, it has an impact on patient care or, and or our safety. Uh, a code, which would be a heart attack with no pulse, no breathing, 
uh, takes a lot of manpower to operate it. We have one person doing ventilation, one person doing compression, one person delivering drugs to the person, one person operating the monitor, and another getting the cot or any other equipment we need. So it takes us all a minimum of five people to work a code. Uh, other kinds of runs that we use, if we have car wrecks, the fire truck's there uh, for fuel, fuel suppression, fire suppression on the ground. It also takes multiple people to get somebody in and out of a vehicle to make sure that we don't paralyze them when we package them. It is, but the, go back to your previous statement about the number of people for to support the ambulance. But in that case, it's not a car accident. It's somebody in their home. So why would the fire truck show up? On a cardiac? Yeah. Uh, uh, cardiac, we're still doing all these things. We're pushing drugs. We're running a monitor. We're still doing, even if it's not a code, we're still takes multiple people. And a lot of those turn bad. So if I've only got two people on scene, that's the reason why they get dispatched. I think the question out. is, is why aren't more people on the in the ambulance if that is required versus bringing a fire truck and an ambulance just to get the staff? Well, I think that was kind of the point. Okay, so station four has only a fire truck. And if you're across the street from it and you have a choking, do you want to wait for the ambulance to get there? Or would you like the fire truck? All fire trucks, all personnel at San Angelo Fire Department are paramedics. We send, in that case, and not all stations have ambulances, so we are sending the closest resources. If it's a choking, maybe we'll get them cleared, maybe we won't. If we don't, we're still going to have to transport them. Fire trucks don't carry transport capacity. So th there's a reason. We do not run fire trucks on every run. It is specific things where we need that manpower or it is a component to patient safety or care. I think that answers the question. Thank you. Do I have um, any... Um Questions or comments from city council members? Yes, Harry, comment, you do? Ryan, I want to say thank you for uh, getting these questions answered. I appreciate it. Uh, for somebody that has uh, <clears throat> been a firefighter and uh, an emergency, emergency medical technician, I kind of have an understanding where some citizens don't. So I appreciate what you and your staff does, and I appreciate you getting to the microphone and, and answering those questions for the citizens. Thank you. Tama, Tommy, do you have any other questions or comments? Thank Billy, you. Thank Lane, you, Brian. Lucy? Okay, thank you, Brian. <laughs> Item C is first public hearing and consideration of an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Administrative Article 2.7, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, Division 10, Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Board, Section 2.07.284, Duties. Teresa, I think you're doing this presentation. Yes, ma'am. In 2016, um, Council added to the Tiers Board the duties of the Downtown Development Commission, and there's been a request to have those duties now removed from the Tiers' responsibilities and putting them back to being only responsible for those things um, that the statute addresses, which is primarily the TIERS funds. Are there questions or comments for Teresa from Council? Billy. Um, Teresa, when the duties were, you know, reassigned, I guess, to the TIERS board, um, do you know what the, uh, why that was done that way? Um, I do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I do. Because at the point in time, there was an intent to combine the downtown development group with the tiers group. Okay. And that was the reason, but the tiers group is not, res it, in the original tiers documents, that is not the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And those responsibilities and those people involved with the downtown development group were not merged in there. Okay. So the, then that decision was changed to not merge those two groups? The intent was to merge them, and they tried to do that. Several of those people did not move forward with that. Okay. And the reality is is that um, the board members for tiers are not selected um, based off of the original downtown development strategy. Mary so this, yeah. oh, okay. I was just going to say, so this works well for both groups? Well, the downtown development group doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Totally gone. Mary, if I may. And you're, the mayor's correct. Uh, there was a move to start combining boards uh, a few years back with previous city council. Now, this board uh, was combined with the Downtown Development Co Commission, and uh, part of the responsibilities would have been to take on more of the development aspect of it, and that never happened. Tears has continued functioning as they've always functioned. 
Uh, and at this point, we had our meeting, our, our planning workshop back in, in, in uh, March, and we talked about the importance of economic development and downtown development as well, uh, and putting a focus on that. And at this point, it's not happening through the tiers board. We want to make sure that we do have that concentration. We do work toward that, and let's make the tiers what tiers has been and should be, and then get to the point where we start concentrating on the, on the downtown development uh, from a different perspective. So at this point, uh, that's why the request has gone through. Let's just go ahead and put it back to where it was and let us concentrate, let the city concentrate on the other aspect of it. Okay. Well, I thought that um, we did still have the downtown development group that Del mm -hmm. Velasquez is in. Oh, what no. is no, that's Downtown San Angel Inc., and that's a nonprofit group, okay. which is, and it's formed because downtown is a Main Street city, which is a combination of, uh, which is under the Texas Historic Commission. Okay. And you are selected by them to become a Main Street city oh, okay. in support okay. with the city. So the only way you become a Main Street city is if the city is willing to support that program in combination with that organization raising funds to function. And what was happening was there's a huge, big, the Main Street program is intended to be the down, uh, downtown revitalization organization. That's what they do. They work with developers um, to find ways to take the old buildings and rework them and make them usable again. So you actually had a huge conflict because you had the Main Street program, which is their direct responsibility. Then you had a downtown development group which didn't make sense to have because you'd already, and the city already supports the Main Street program. So it was quite confusing for everybody. Okay, well, I don't mean to beat this, but if we no longer have, um, you know, the downtown development group, and we're going to take these duties from tiers and move them where? To the... Downtown Inc. Inc. Okay, all right. Thank and that you. is the primary function. That's what they do. Okay. And if people come and visit San Angelo, the first persons they contact, downtown San Angelo, Inc. So it was very confusing. People didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Thank Do you. I have further comments or questions from anybody? With that, then I guess we take a vote. So do I have a motion? You need public comment, Well, Mayor. it's really, oh, I'm sorry. Do I have public comment? Kind of got out of that because we haven't had anything we need a public comment on. Sorry. No public comment, then we will have a motion for approval. Move. A second. Second. Um, that's when we actually take public comment now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we'll you, take You a primed them for it, Mason. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're, getting they're, ready. They're, they're ready to go now. Lining you up. Okay, with that said, may I have a vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Item D. First public hearing in consideration of an ordinance amending Article 2.07, Boards, Committees, and Commissions, Section 2.07.253, COSA DC, Board of Directors, enacting term limits. And Teresa, you also are on this one. Yes, ma'am. There's been a request to um, have council consider term limits for the COSA DC Board. What's been proposed is two consecutive two-year terms. The first term would be the term that um, board members are currently serving. And um, do I have other questions for Teresa from council? And the no. reason, just to, to, to go into the reason this was requested, because it is, the only, it is the only board where there's not term limits. And in fact, council and mayors have term limits. So the question mark is why was there one board who didn't have term limits when everybody else is subject to term limits? And that's the reason it came up. With that, no questions, no comments. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. Do I have public comment? With no public comment, we will take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? Motion passes 7-0. That completes the regular agenda for today. We will now go into closed session. The executive session under the provision of government code, Title V, Open Government, Ethics, Subtitle A, Open Government, Chapter 551, Open Meetings, Subchapter D, Exceptions to Requirement that Meetings be Open under the following sections. A, Section 551.071A, Consult with Attorney when the governmental body seeks the advice of its attorney about pending or contemplated litigation regarding Jacob 
Mediano versus State of Texas, J. Weatherby and Kelly Lahori. B, Section 551.0712, consult with attorney when the governmental body seeks the advice of its attorney on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Disi Disciplinarian Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter regarding, regarding the Ford Ranch. C, Section 551.072, deliberations about real property regarding Lake Nasworthy residential lease lots. And D, Section 551.072, consult with attorney on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas Dis Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with this chapter regarding, one, the Replacement Economic Development Agreement with Hirschfield Energy Systems, LLC, and two, discussion related to legal counsel for water utility projects. E, Section 551.087, to discuss an offer of financial or other incentives to companies with whom the City of San Angelo Development Corporation is conducting economic development negotiations and which the City of San Angelo Development Corporation seeks to have, locate, stay, or expand in San Angelo. About how long do you think we'll be gone? I gave an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so, yeah, we do. So we will um, adjourn at the moment and to close session. We'll be gone for about an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes, and then we will finish the city council meeting. Thank you. Okay. 11, 12 a.m. And um, Tommy, do you want to um, make the announcements about? Yes, uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute an agreement with Jason Hill to serve as uh, legal counsel for City of San Angelo water utility projects. Thank you. Any public comment? With no public comment, we will take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? No. Motion passes 7-0. Um, we will now um, consider approving the following board nomination. City of San Angelo Development Corporation, Aaron Padilla, Padilla SMD3 to an unexpired term ending February 2009. Do I have a motion for that? So move. A second. Second. Any public comment? With no public comment, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes 7-0. The next um, item is consider the schedule for July City Council meetings. I suggest we leave them like they are. I won't be here for the July 3rd meeting. And I have checked with um, with city departments. The 17th will need to be kept if you decide not to have a meeting on the 3rd. Uh, additionally, it might give everyone a little bit of a breather before we move into the weekly meetings in August. Uh, as you remember, we're going to have the budget hearings on the off weeks in August. Um, also, the first meeting is uh, scheduled for July 3rd, so it's the day before uh, Independence Day. Double on the 17th? Well, we would stay with the one on the 17th. The question mark is, do we do one on the 10th and the 17th, or do we meet only one time in July, or do we do the 10th, or do we do the 17th and the 31st? You're saying 10th. Are you, do you mean well, the 3rd and 17th? Because if we're not doing the 3rd, I'm saying, oh, you're saying your option to get okay. two meetings in the month of July would mean doing the 10th and the 17th or the 17th and the 31st. And then the problem with that is if you go into the next month, get four meetings that yeah month. you got four meetings which is too difficult I hey, think just have one I, I believe the I mean as far as what we have on the schedule as far as items that's been uh, you know on, in the pipeline so far I think having one meeting in July would would be feasible what do you think Daniel I'm fine with that mayor I think that we've been doing really well as far as getting through our meetings and we can take a look at what's going to um, come on, on future agendas and kind of spread it out a little bit too so we don't end up with a crazy long meeting yeah. <laughs> but uh I don't have an issue with it. I think we'll be okay with one meeting. So do we need a motion on this or do we? Okay, so then what I think what I'm hearing everybody say is we're going to have one meeting in the month of July, and that would be on the 17th of July. Is that correct? I, I will not be here. You won't be here. I will not be here. Doesn't matter. I mean, I had missed anything, so I can miss one. Does the t and, and, and Harry, you won't be here? He's not going to be here on the 3rd. Brian, okay. what was the issue about the 17th that we needed to have it then? Planning has already sent out notices, and they would have to resend out notices, which would, uh, you know, incur some costs. So we really, okay. yeah. It's
It's a lot right. of notice. So we're going to say the 17th knowing that Tom Thompson would not be here for that meeting. Is that correct? And you could change your plans. <laughs> you do what you need to do. All right. With that, um, July meeting will be the 17th and 17th only for the month of July. Then let's see the announcements and consideration of future agenda items. Are there any? I do have one. Yep, Tom. I mean Harry. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, June the 12th at 5:30, there'll be a town hall meeting, update on Bell Street construction. Uh, Lucy and I will host that right here in the, in the council chambers. 5:30, you said. Is there any other announcements? Yes, we will do a notice of possible quorum just in case, you know, more than a quorum wants to attend that. Okay. All we right. We adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's done. Have a great afternoon. Great weekend. Pray for Go. rain. Thank you. Absolutely.